वेलकम बैक व्यूअर्स सो इफ यू हैव फॉलोड माई प्रीवियस वीडियोज यू वुड बी नोइंग दैट वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद दिस सब्जेक्ट कॉल्ड एज थियरी ऑफ कंप्यूटेशन और ऑटोमेटा थियरी सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी सॉ वॉट एक्जैक्टली आर दी वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ लैंग्वेजेस वॉट आर द डिफरेंट पावर्स वी ऑल्सो सॉ वॉट इज चॉम्सकीज हैर आर की इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद अ टॉपिक कॉल्ड एज फाइनल ऑटोमेटा आई हैव ऑलरेडी इंट्रोड्यूस्ड यू टू दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक कॉल्ड फाइनल ऑटोमेटा इन द पास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स इन दिस वीडियो द अजेंडा इज गोइंग टू बी what are the various types of finite automata that is dfa nfa and epsilon nfa so these are the three types of finite automata we are going to discuss all of these in detail followed by what is the difference between fsm and fa actually we are going to start with this topic first then we will be dealing with dfa nfa and epsilon nfa so without wasting much time let's get started with the very first topic that is what is the difference between fsm and fa so the first topic is going to be like this fsm versus fa now what do you mean by fsm fsm basically is called as finite state machines we have seen this in the past also fsm is called as finite state machines now what is the difference between this machine and an fa can any one of you tell me well it's very simple we have already discussed in the past that fsm consists of three tuples i o and s whereas if i talk about fa it consists of five tuples which are nothing but inputs or the alphabets then the set of states q then the initial state qs or q0 let me write qs then comes the final state f and finally the transitions depicted by this symbol so what exactly these five terms mean i already have a particular slide on this just have a look on the left hand side you can see there is a very simple model called as the fsm it has an input based upon certain conditions it will provide you some output whereas on the other hand fa consists of the five tuples we have discussed you can interchangeably use qs instead of q0 where qs is nothing but the initial state okay so you can see that there are five tuples in the case of finite automata which are nothing but inputs the states initial state final state and transitions which we have just now seen so what is the basic difference if you revise what we did in the last lecture we saw classification if you remember i had told you that fa consists of these many classifications i can say without output and with output so if you remember this without output further consists of three machines whereas on the other hand with output consists of two machines so without output consists of dfa nfa and epsilon nfa that is what we are going to learn in this lecture on the other hand with output the fa's are what we call as mur machine and mili machine so we are going to focus on this today in today's lecture that is dfa nfa and epsilon nfa so where is fsm in the picture fsm is nowhere why because fsm is nothing but the very basic model or we can say the prototype model which gave rise to fa nowadays whenever we say fa fsm we can interchangeably use it but in the exam if a question is typically asked on fsm you cannot construct an fa well you can but you won't get the specific marks assigned for that why because fsm and fa might work almost similar but the structure is different as you can see fsm consists of three tuples only whereas fa consists of five tuples why the additional two tuples the additional two tuples are basically added so that you would come to know what are the transitions transitions are nothing but if i start from qs state then if i want to go to q0 state or q1 state then what is the condition what are the inputs what are the states based upon which we can make a transition that is very important for that purpose we need to have something called as this transition symbol or the delta symbol whatever you want to call it using this we can show that a particular machine is able to make a transition to a different state based upon certain inputs so how to show those transitions it's very simple suppose your machine is currently present in the q0 state and you are taking an input suppose a okay then what happens is from q0 on input a the machine might go to a state called q1 
Similarly, on input B, the machine might remain in the same state as Q0. So these are what we call as transitions. Depicting this was not possible using FSMs because as you see FSMs don't consist of any tuple which correspond to transitions. That is why FSMs are considered or FSMs were considered as the basic prototype model which gave rise to FA. That is why nowhere in the literatures or nowhere in the books FSM is mentioned specifically because it is assumed that you know about FSMs and then only you are going to learn about FA. Right? So that is what FSM is and how it gave rise to FA because if you compare it they are more or less same FSM has a tuple called I for inputs whereas FA consists of this uh, sigma symbol for inputs so they are equivalent similarly FSM has this particular S symbol for states whereas FA consists of this Q symbol for finite set of states so again they are same whereas in the case of outputs FSM only consists of O as the output it will only give you what is the current output of that particular state but it does not give you the idea of the transitions that is where these three tuples come into picture these three combined will give you a particular output so again you can say that fsm and fa are equivalent but fa is more powerful as compared to an fsm so i hope i am able to clarify this particular doubt clarify this concept what exactly is fsm what is fa and now you should be in a position to solve the problems in the next few videos, we will see how to solve a particular problem using FSM as well as the nomenclature of FA. So I will take one problem, one or two problems and solve both the problems based on one will be the FSM, the other will be FA. Fine. So that's about the introduction of what exactly FSM is and how is it different from FA.